So this is the second section on restrained beams, and this this uh, part will cover shear resistance and combined bending and shear. So we'll start off with shear resistance. Um, so just like bending, we're, we are referring to clause 6.2 of Eurocode 3, which deals with the cross-section resistance. And in particular, we're dealing with clause 626, which covers the resistance of cross-sections against shear. So although in most cases bending will govern the design, certain situations will arise in which the shear forces are the controlling factor. Therefore, we use this equation 617 to ensure that the design shear force is less than the design shear resistance of the section. And here, shear is represented by V, and just like the design moment MED, we have the subscript ED, which stands for design effect. The subscript PLRD of the design shear resistance indicates that it is the plastic design resistance, and in the majority of cases, it is the plastic shear resistance that will be used. So here we have a table comparing the two methods of working out shear resistance using BS5950 and Eurocode 3. And this top row shows the expression to work out the design shear resistance. So for Eurocode 3, we have the shear area AV times the yield stress over square root of 3 divided by a partial factor gamma m naught. We can compare that to the BS5950 expression, where we also have terms for the shear area and the yield stress. 1 over the square root of 3 is equal to 0.577, which is very close to 0.6. Therefore, the two expressions are very similar. Now in the next row we have the different notation used for the design shear force, so VED for your group 3. And the bottom row gives us the expression for the shear check, which I talked about on the previous slide. So as I said before, it's normal to use the plastic um, shear resistance, VPLRD, which is given by expression 618. Gamma M naught is equal to 1. So the equation can be simplified to the shear area times the yield stress over the square root of 3. And as I said previously, 1 over the square root of 3 is roughly 0 0.577. Therefore, this form of the equation is not that dissimilar to the one used in BS5950. Now, an important change though from BS5950 is the shear area, AV. And so it will differ slightly. So Eurocode 3 provides this list which gives the equations for the shear areas of a number of sections. So some of these terms might be new to you. But there is a table on the next slide which will give you your definitions. So A is the cross-sectional area, B is the overall breadth, and that would have been capital B in 5 minute that row. H is the overall depth, so it might have been maybe D in BS5950. HW is the depth of the web, and that's equivalent to the overall depth minus two times the flange thickness, and R is the root radius. TFN is the flange thickness, so you might have been used to capital T. TW is the web thickness, and that would have been small t in 5 name variable. And then this value eta can be conservatively taken as a 1.0. So overall, there's nothing too difficult there. Now, these two diagrams show clearly the difference in the shear areas calculated using BS5950 and Eurocode 3. The area worked out using Eurocode 3 will be slightly larger. And this is an advantage because the larger the shear area, then the larger the shear resistance will be. So we have covered the shear resistance of a beam. And here is a summer table showing the design steps. Um, the first step is to calculate the shear area using the equations given in Eurocode 3 plus 626.3. The next step is to calculate the design shear resistance, and in most cases that will be the design plastic shear resistance. So we substitute the value of the shear area and the yield stress, yield stress, which we have already got from classifying this action, and then we divide that by square root of 3. So now that we have the design shear resistance, we need to do step 3, so we need to make sure that the design shear resistance is larger than the design shear force. So those are the steps you need to complete to check that the beam has enough resistance to shear. Another thing that we need to consider is the shear buckling resistance of this action. But for most standard road sections, this check is not really necessary, since the height of the web divided by the thickness of the web um, is usually less than 72 epsilon. This is expression given in the Eurocode, so expression 622, and ADA can be conservatively taken as 1. But as I said before, it's very rarely that we'll ever need to, to check the shear and buffing resistance of unstiffened waves for standard road sections. So I'll not go into any more detail about shear buffing resistance in this presentation, but just so that you know, reference should be made to clause 
5.2 of EN1993 Part 1.5. So now that we've covered all of the design steps, um, I'm going to go through a few examples. So this is the first example, and it's asking us to determine the shear resistance of a class 1 356 times 171 times 51 UV in grade S 375C with a factor design action of 150 kilonewtons. So the first thing that we need to do is calculate the shear area, AV, and for this example, I've included the solution to both BS5950 and Eurocode 3 methods so that we can just uh, compare the results. So in BS5950, the shear area of the UV will be calculated as the thickness of the web, T, times the depth of the beam, uh, capital D. The Eurocode 3, code 626 part 3, gives us this expression for the shear area of the beam. Now we can get um, the values of those terms from the section tables in the blue book. So calculating the shear area using BS5950 um, is very straightforward. We get an answer of 2626 mm squared. The expression for Eurocode 3 method of calculating the shear area is slightly longer. And we also have to make sure the shear area calculated is greater than or equal to this condition. So ADA times HW times, H times TW. So after substituting in the values, we get a shear area of 2865.2 mm squared, which is marginally larger than the value calculated using the BS5950 method. Right, so now that we have the shear area, the next step is to substitute that into the equation for the design shear resistance, to make sure that the resistance is greater than the design shear force. So using Eurocode 3, the shear resistance given by expression 618, AV we worked out as 2865.2 mm squared, FY is 275 newtons per millimeter squared, and the partial factor gamma M0 is 1. So just substituting in those values, then we get a design plastic shear resistance of 454.9 kN. Compare that to the result using the BS5950 method of 433.5 kN, and you'll see that the Eurocodes in this case gives increased resistance. So the final step then is to make sure that the design shear resistance is greater than the design shear force. And we can see that for both methods, um, there is more than enough resistance. So we've completed all of the design steps and can say, and um, we can safely say that this action is suitable at resisting shear. So now here is another example and I'll go through it step by step and then I can compare the result worked out by hand to the result worked out using master series software. So here we have a roll channel, section 229 times 89 in grade S275 steel. Here's just a screenshot from the big book showing the section and some dimensions. So some of the terminology you might not be used to, but it's easy to figure out what the terms mean just by looking at the diagram. So we have the height and breadth of the section, the web and flange thicknesses, and the root radius, and the total area A. So as listed on the previous slide, um, the flange thickness is 13.3 millimeters. Web thickness of 8.6 millimeters, and these are both less than 40 millimeters. So from table 7 of BS EN 10025-2, for grade S275 steel, we get a yield strength of 275 newtons per millimeter squared. Next, we need to calculate the shear area, and for that we refer it to clause 626.3, which gives this expression to work out the shear area of a roll channel section with the load parallel to the web. All of these terms, A, B, T, F, T, W and R are section properties and we've already listed them on the previous slide. So it's just a matter of substituting in the values to get the shear area and we get 2092mm squared. So now that we have the shear area and the yield strength, we can then just substitute in the values into expression 618 to get the shear resistance. So that works out as 332 kilonewtons. So now in the next slide, we are going to compare this value to the to the um, result using Master Series software. So this is a screenshot from Master Series, and um, we're using Master Key. And you can see in the box on the top right that I've made sure to set to select um, Eurocode Free Design Code option. The first step is to input the section choice using the drop down boxes. So we have a two two nine times eighty nine channel in grade S two seven five steel. Now that we've put in um, section there are numerous options that we can choose but to check the um, shear resistance I've chosen the web bearing and buckling capacities option from the elements design menu 
Compare the value of the result of 338.8 kilonewtons to the hand calculation results where we got 332 kilonewtons, and you'll see that the results are very similar. Um, so it just goes to show you, you know, software is another option that you can use to save time. Now that the shear resistance has been worked out then, we, we just need to check um, if we need to check for um, shear buckling. We have this expression 622, and if it's satisfied, then we don't need to check for shear buckling. So epsilon we can get from the bottom of table 5.2, and for a yield strength of 275 newtons per millimeter squared, epsilon is equal to 0 0.92. With eta, which can be conservatively taken as 1, HW is the height of the web, and its overall height minus 2 times the flange thickness, so we get 202 millimeters, and then we have the web thickness TW, which is 8.6 millimeters. So substituting in the values, um, then we get 23.5 on the left hand side, 66.2 on the right hand side, so 23.5 is less than 66.2, so the expression is satisfied and no shear buckling verification is required. So we've just finished covering she um, shear, and I've already covered bending. This next section would briefly go through combined bending and shear. So when Eurocode 3 clause 628 states that allowances should be made for the effect that shear forces have on the moment resistance, and this is because that if, sh if shear is present, the plastic moment of the section is reduced. Clause 628 of the Eurocodes also states that if the force is less than half of the plastic shear resistance, so VED is less than 0.5 of VPLRD. The effect um, on the moment resistance can usually be ignored, but you should also note that it wouldn't need to be taken into account if the shear buckling reduces the cross-sectional resistance. So if the design shear force exceeds 50% of the design shear resistance, the design moment should be calculated using a reduced yield strength, FYR, which is equal to 1 minus rho times the yield strength. So we will have already determined the yield strength Fy from the section classification. We need to work out this term rho, so that's given by expression 629, and it's two, time, two times the design shear force over the design plastic shear resistance minus 1, and that's all squared. Thus, for rolled I and H sections, the reduced design resistance moment for the section about the major axis M, Y, V, R, D, would be given by expression 630 from clause 626. So this um, is the end of this uh, section on restrained beams. Um, if you check out the next section, it will cover serviceability and also some examples. Thank you.